While many of us dream of a housing crash that would make homes somewhat affordable again, the last couple of months have proved something that was previously believed to be impossible. Even though mortgage rates have more than doubled and home prices have gone up over 40%, the real estate market is showing no clear signs of a severe downturn. People are simply giving up on the idea of a crash and for good reason. Every month they wait in anticipation of relief, but as the months go by, they continually watch in horror as homes just get more and more expensive, going far beyond what anyone believed to be possible. The whole situation has created a bizarre supply constraint market that we have never seen before. And because of this unique situation, there have been truly bizarre developments in real estate overall. One of the most unbelievable ones is the new home market. Today, it's not uncommon to see brand new modern homes priced very close to an outdated existing home. For as long as we can remember in the days of the so-called normal market, new homes have always carried a significant premium over existing ones. Today, this presumption is eroding fast and on the surface, it makes absolutely no sense. Everything we think we know about consumer behavior is being thrown out the window, and I can prove it by examining the actions of the world's most successful investor, Warren Buffett. You see, despite cries from everyone on YouTube regarding the health of the housing market and the fact that it's likely in a massive bubble just based on price growth alone, Warren Buffett, the man known for being a pro at avoiding bubbles and investing in value, made an unbelievable bet revealed last week in his company's public disclosures. Berkshire Hathaway, out of nowhere, made serious investments in three large publicly traded home builders. This includes D.R. Horton, Lennar, and Ryan Holmes. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, Warren Buffett, like I just mentioned, is known for long-term safe bets, and his track record is obviously legendary. He doesn't often make mistakes, and more importantly, he doesn't like to take shocking, controversial positions. It's very hard for people to believe that Buffett would make such a serious bet on housing right as we're in the middle of this so-called bubble. His new position has made a lot of housing bears question their rationale and for good reason. Why would the world's best investor push his chips to the middle of the table, holding home builders as his cards, when everyone is saying that housing is about to experience a massive crash? And to make it even worse, stocks like D.R. Horton have already jumped up nearly 2x from their 2020 highs, so it's not like he's buying some sort of damaged company. This sector has been heating up for quite some time now, so if Berkshire is investing up here, they think this is just the start of an even more successful bull run for years down the road. Now, while you look at this chart in awe and amazement, I would greatly appreciate it if you would just take a moment to direct your attention to the subscribe and like buttons. If you could please just take a few seconds to hit them both so you can let the algorithm know that you're enjoying the content. Now, back to what I was saying about Berkshire. Let's backtrack just a little bit so we can further understand the significance of this move. How can all of this really be possible? Why would anyone invest in housing way up here? Well, you see, back in 2020, rates and prices began to rise rapidly. This caused what was commonly known as the lock-in effect on the market. A lot of people who were able to refinance or lock in very low rates essentially froze their real estate positions. Obviously, this made it very hard to trade your current mortgage, that's 2.9%, for a newer one that can be as high as 7.5% today. So what we got is a very tight inventory situation. There simply wasn't any houses for sale, and even today, that inventory situation remains horrible. But in a weird way, this helped fuel one of the biggest home builder housing runs in history. The R. Horton stock went from a 2020 low of $33 to a 2023 high of $130. In just three short years, the company experienced a 315% increase. And they were not the only ones. Almost every other major home builder had similar results. Now, what was the reason for all of this? Well, the new home builders capitalized on the fact that existing homes or the old homes you see listed everywhere were getting so expensive that the new homes they were building in many cases cost the same or were priced just slightly higher. Now, instead of raising prices significantly to keep the typical new home premium, they went for a different strategy, attacking market share instead. According to Redfin analysis, new construction now makes up one-third of for-sale homes. Before the pandemic, this number used to be around 14%, which means the new home market is now two times larger as a share of sales than what it was pre-2020. 
Basically, for every home that's sold in the United States, around 33% of the time, it's a new home. In a lot of places, new construction is the only option for many buyers. And when you add in incentives, you can clearly see why so many people are jumping into new builds. DR Horton, as an example, will offer some customers a 5.5% interest rate, which is significantly below the market rate today. These are called rate buy-downs, and they just add fuel to the so-called new build fire. With customers already contemplating going with new homes just based on price, the interest rate incentive is like the extra cherry on top. If we look at markets across the United States, you'll see plenty of examples where it just doesn't make financial sense to buy an old house, especially when a brand new modern build is usually just a small difference in payment. Existing homes are riddled with problems that are a headache to deal with. Just a simple bathroom renovation today can cost $10,000 even in cheap markets. The labor expense has gotten completely out of hand and most people will take the postage stamp backyard in exchange for a beautiful modern interior requiring no upgrades. Okay, so now we understand why people are going with new and the rationale behind Warren's investment. But the main question remains, where is this all going? If you really think a crash is coming, then why would Warren Buffett invest in home builders even after they've risen over 300% since 2020? You would think that he must believe that they will occupy a larger market share for the long term, otherwise he wouldn't be making this bet. And if that is the case, then what he's saying is that the inventory situation will continue to be dreadful for years to come and prices will remain relatively stable. If we look at Alto's research numbers, the current inventory sits at 492,000. That's how many homes are available for sale in the United States today. That number is 10% less than last year, and while it's ticked up in recent weeks, we have a long way to go before we ever reach pre-2020 numbers. Some experts are now starting to argue that this tight inventory situation is here to stay permanently, that it's the new normal, and to be fair, there's a lot of reasons why this could very well be the case. As we speak, there are thousands of buyers who are lined up on the sidelines, ready to buy the second mortgage rates drop down to more reasonable levels. And below them, there are thousands more who are ready to buy when prices go down even a small amount. Over the past three years, this growing cohort of patient buyers has created this reserve demand of sorts. Every time the market gets shaken up, whether it's mortgage rates going down or prices, what happens is thousands of buyers step up to take advantage of the opportunity and ultimately this cohort fills the void, preventing any sort of crash momentum. Essentially, this group of people keeps the market propped up and it's why many are now starting to believe that all of this market mayhem isn't going away and residential real estate will continue to prosper. Here's why this is the case. This is about as simple as I can make it. First, you have to understand that inventory essentially dictates prices. And if we look over the last five, six years, you can see that in 2022, we witnessed one of the craziest swings in housing inventory of all time. From the bottom to the top, we saw a 161% increase in available homes for sale. And remember, this would be almost impossible to replicate due to base effects, but regardless, let's use this as our template. Even if we assume that going forward, we somehow see inventory rise 161% per year from here, it would take over two years of heavy growth to see the same numbers that we saw in 2018, which by the way, were considered healthy back then. So ultimately, if we're somewhat realistic about this and realize that a sustained 161% inventory growth is basically impossible and that there is a massive cohort of sideline buyers ready to scoop up any extra inventory, then we have to admit that the inventory situation for housing in the United States will be rough for probably the next decade. And if that's the case, you can easily see why and how Warren Buffett decided to buy up some of the country's largest home builders. He likely doesn't believe that we will experience anything close to a 2008 like crash. And a massive part of the reason is the fact that inventory will continue to be tight for many more years to come. Thank you guys for watching. As always, please make sure you hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed it and make sure you drop a comment below letting me know what you think about the new Warren Buffett bet on housing.